Now that changes the definition a little bit for me. For okay. me personally, that changes the definition because I would not have included, you, you talked about the silent treatment, mm. right? Right. As being a form of emotional abuse. And I would have never put that in that category. Right. Not in the right. many years. I yeah. probably would have treated it as though it was a good thing. Wow. Interesting. I'm, yeah. I'm glad you ain't talking to me for a while. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Today, we're back at it again, and we're talking about restoring marital relationships after the trust has been broken. We've hit some topics already that have been really popular amongst our uh, viewers. Uh, infidelity, emotional affairs, um, obviously physical affairs, financial mismanagement, um, and several different other topics that touch on the same basis of dealing with uh, infidelity and dealing with trust, broken trust in marriage. Today, we want to touch on a topic that is, it, it's, it's all important, it's all serious, but this one is, to me, is very sensitive, um, near and dear to me, because I've dealt with this with extended family members in terms of domestic abuse. And, you know, in regards to marriage, you know, domestic abuse, and it's categorized in, as verbal abuse, emotional abuse, and obviously physical abuse. Um, what do you guys think of, you know, how does this impact, you know, broken, so, so we know how it impacts the broken part of the marriage, but how does this, how do you come back from this, guys? You know, because it's one of those things where, how, how do you coach someone or motivate someone to go back to some place or, or, or to rekindle in a marriage where there is domestic abuse? I think that um, at the outset, I think one of the things that we have to make sure we do is we need to kind of first begin to draw some clear lines as, well, as clearly as possible as it relates to what really constitutes abuse. Uh, when we um, talk about obviously physical abuse, that's a little bit more clear, a little bit more easy to uh, delineate as it relates to what that is. But when we begin to talk about things like emotional abuse or verbal abuse for that matter, those two, those two kind of go hand in hand. Um, we, 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 do, we need to be a little bit more clear with what that actually is. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think before we get into how to recover from it, what do you think about maybe let's do it, taking up a moment just to kind of define it a little bit. Sure. Makes okay. sense. So I know Pastor Adam was working on this particular part of it, and I, I'm sure that he's got something that he wanted to add at this particular point as well. Yeah. So just for the sake of context, uh, verbal or emotional abuse uh, can, def can be defined as a range of words or behaviors used to manipulate, intimidate, and maintain power and control over someone. Uh, these include insults, humiliation, uh, ridicule, the silent treatment, um, and attempts to scare, isolate, or control somebody. Okay. And so these are the things that happen in terms of verbal or emotional abuse. Now that changes the definition a little bit for me. For okay. me personally, that changes the definition because I would not have included, you, you talked about the silent treatment, mm. right? Right. As being a form of emotional abuse. And I would have never put that in that category. Right. Not in the right. many years. I yeah. probably would have treated it as though it was a good thing. Wow. Interesting. I'm, yeah. I'm glad you ain't talking to me for a while. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But I think that if, but if, I guess, if you look, but I guess if I think about it in the context of an attempt to manipulate, exactly. Then, it, then it does because it does cross the line into abuse. Then, right. Minister Thomas, what do you think about that? Yeah. Were you were you yeah, it, with that definition? I am actually. I am, and actually, I've always thought that the that the silent. Uh, verbiage was a form of abuse as well. Uh, the not speaking is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if I'm calling because he just mentioned part of that abuse is manipulation. Right. So that's a form of manipulation when mm -hmm. you're not speaking. And when we got people not speaking for whatever reason, uh, and you're not trying to speak to a person for whatever reason that could be, that's also a form. I mean, not in the general sense. We don't tend to think of it right. like, you know, someone is 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 berating someone with a with a barrage of insults, but that's a form as well. 
uh, because you're withholding something um, from that person. Right, right, yeah. So I think whenever we're talking about uh, these things, it, it has to do with trying to control somebody else with your actions and trying to put them in a place where you have the advantage over them. And so anytime you're not communicating with your spouse or you're using your emotions to control your spouse or using your words to control your spouse, it's tantamount to abuse. Or if you're using their emotional frailties or whatever, whatever emotional issues that they may be dealing with against them. Exactly. Okay, yeah. I'm with you now. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 you know me, I'm going to have, we got to draw that line all the way across. Um, if we can't use that silent treatment, as we call it, I'm not talking to you, right? I mean, obviously it sounds very childish, right? It, it, but it happens. It's, it's, it's a regular thing uh, in certain relationships. Is there any opportunity? Do we see there any opportunity or is there any good reason to be quiet when, when, because you, you can say silent treatment, but that could be at the hands of abuse. So if someone's abusing me verbally and I don't respond, I'm not saying anything, then that could be classified as the silent treatment as well. Well, I think as I'm thinking about it now, because y'all, y'all helping me out here now, as I'm thinking about it now, I'm, I'm seeing the motives as being key right. to the definition. Right. Uh, because, uh, you know, when, when we use in the definition manipulate, okay, now am I being quiet because I know that you desire communication mm -hmm. and I'm using your desire for communication as a weapon to get you to act the way I want you to act to control you. Well, then that becomes manipulation and that becomes abuse. Yeah. Yeah. I and think, also to, I think it, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, I was going to say also, too, I think along with it, in terms of what we're classifying as silent treatment, I think it needs to be, uh, I, need, I think it needs to be said that when we're having that communication with our spouses, that yes, cooler heads should prevail. And so that should be communicated to the other person. Hey, look, you know what? Let's take a break from this. Let's not talk about this right now. Let's talk about this later. So that way it cannot be seen as the silent treatment because both parties have agreed not to talk about the topic at this particular point in time. And, yeah. and in a manner of what's called de-escalation. Okay. There's a time when we need to de-escalate. Mm -hmm. And de-escalate means sometimes that, you know what? We have to zip it. Mm -hmm. Because right. now I don't want to exacerbate this by going on and on and on. So yes, now it's time that I go to the game room. Maybe it's time that I take a walk. Maybe that time I do something so we don't escalate this. So that silent treatment can be used only in methods, I think, which is good. So you are de-escalating instead of exacerbating the situation. All right, so we didn't have, we didn't have delineate, de-escalate, <laughs> and uh, exacerbate. Right. <laughs> all, all right, y'all. We, we cook it with grease right now. now. Right. So, 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 but remember, the, the critical, one of the critical things we said in pre-production is know your triggers. And I think yeah. it was Pastor Adam that yeah. brought that topic up. If you know that, you know, there's an emotional exchange, That's right. a very heated exchange, uh -huh. to your point, Pastor, uh, Minister Thurman, is that de-escalation is, is an art, mm -hmm. is an art, and it's an essential part of the process. Sometimes dying to yourself means you got to shut up uh -huh, true. and let people that are not necessarily meaning anybody any harm, but but if they think they're in control of the argument and they're blowing off that steam, okay, sometimes you can't talk to people that are high-headed, uh -huh. right? You, you, you literally, whatever you say, it's just pew. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm a little, I don't want to say I disagree. I just think there's more, to, to your point, Pastor John, there's more um, levels to the whole silent treatment thing. I think there's there's different but, level but, but initiates. So I think that there's nuance to it. Yeah, nuance. Uh, but, I, but I think that that nuance is broken down into the motives. Um, but I like what he said, though. He said insults, obviously, humiliation, trying to make a person look bad, ridicules, yeah. mm -hmm. silent treatment, attempts to scare, attempts mm -hmm. to isolate the person. Uh, and then, of course, trying to control the person, which is what Pastor Adam was saying. I think... Good. I'm, 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 I'm in on, I'm in on that definition of it. I think that, I think that that really covers the basis of verbal slash emotional abuse. Hey guys, it's Pastor John here. 
please, if you like this video that you just saw, hit that like button for us. Second thing I want to ask you to do is to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're putting out videos once a day at about 5.30 p.m. Hit that bell notification so that you'll know when a new video has been uploaded. And then the final thing to do, share this video, share this information. If you know somebody that has a need that it can be benefited by it, please put it out in circulation so that we can try to help as many people as possible. Thanks and God bless.